welcome to this very exciting episode of the Economic Times Cutting Chai Stories with me, Isha Pala. The Cutting Chai Stories is really a series brought to you by ET Edge, where we get to converse with CXOs, info entertain you, our viewers, and get to know some very interesting mantras of success. Today, my very special guest is Mr. Anil Menon, Chief Information Officer, Lulu Group India. He comes with an experience of over 19 years across information technology, retail, e-commerce, real estate, logistics, and hospitality organizations. It is so very exciting to have you on board, Mr. Menon. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Isha, and thanks for having me. You know, let me dive in right into my first question. And I'd really like to ask you, there are some areas that really challenge your interest, uh, them being artificial intelligence, ML, blockchain, and robotics. What would you say is your favorite pick? Robotics, for sure. Wonderful. And you really did not need any time to think over that. Uh, so let me ask you now that, you know, we always do believe that creative thinking is the lifeblood of any organization. But as one keeps growing, there's more and more pressure. How is it that you keep that creative thinking alive in your system, your team? So uh, it's a very, very relevant question for this moment of time where we are uh, walking by. Uh, we generally try to break out uh, uh, the work per se, the task work for the day, vis-a-vis -vis your me time. How do, how do you make sure that you bring a balance around there is something which we work heavily on. Uh, and I personally uh, practice it and I also try to get it into the team while I myself give both the task, obviously the, the, the task need to be completed one, Second, also try to get the, the creative part by getting a brainstorming session between them over a coffee or so, or just keep on probing them on why not this and why that and all of it, right? And as I said, robotics is one of the subjects which we are talking about. Why, why robotics? Because it got AI into it, it's got ML into it, everything embedded into one single uh, platform kind of thing, right? Uh, by doing so, uh, the team is motivated, the brain cells are a little bit triggered rather than doing the routine work of it. So I think that the, the, the aspect of probing and trying to get that creativeness out of it is, is something which we try to do a lot. Fantastic. And you spoke about how important it is to really bond with the team, uh, both online and offline. And that's what takes me to my next question, really, that what would your number one aspect be that you look for a trait in your employees while hiring them or while making sure that they're a part of your team? Very simple, very simple out there. Uh, it's, it's the urge to learn. That the moment you stop that urge or where we largely see that happening around now, uh, it's, it's, more, uh, it's more the driving force, right? If you look at it, uh, the urge for learning is the driving force. And I, I, I personally feel that uh, you can teach every, anyone and everything, anyone, everything. But it's only if the, if the person is willing to accept it, right? And that is where we rightly go about. Right. So it really is about learning every single day and not uh, stopping that process ever. So let me ask you, what do you feel is the best way to build a great team? Oh, super. That's, that's, that's a million dollar question. And it's very subjective to everyone, right? Everyone may have their own thought process. But where I come from is I try to complement my team my teammates, uh, yeah, uh, keeping me at the center. I try to see what is the next. I what see. I also have my strengths and weaknesses, right? If you have done your SWOT analysis personally, right, uh, it works well for us in terms of one. Uh, you know whom to compliment you, right? And then you know whom to compliment him, and so on for so forth. The whole uh, structure is. The ecosystem has been created for the team to work well. So you always have someone's back being taken care of. That's a good uh, knowledge transfer which happens. That's a good, good it's more like it's getting the puzzles right. You may not always get, you'll always have that one uh, uh, tip which is, which is a piece which is lying around somewhere. That's more where you find out for a lot of people and so on. So you know, you mentioned about really knowing one's uh, strengths and one's weaknesses. And here I'd like to ask you that how important do you think that it is to recognize uh, both of these uh, professionally and personally? Oh, it's, it's huge. It's huge. 
one of the one of the key elements of continuous learning is that know where your weaknesses is or what your strengths are right uh, continuous learning just doesn't, doesn't always mean that you always take in knowledge it's also time where you need to impart that knowledge that's your strength which you impart that's a weaknesses where you take in right where you consume the, the knowledge which is around you and it's it's in millions of millions of terabytes and gigabytes and petabytes and all over right how do you consume that so personally and professionally i think knowing your strengths and weaknesses is part of your continuous learning process right uh, in that is professional professionally i can do all this whole ai bi ml all of that put into personally it brings a very big it's a huge balancing force around your ecosystem. right which is personally which then brings that personality of you as a leader to your organization where it both are linked to each other is what i am coming to and i think this is this is how i go about with the personal and professional life right very well said there and in fact uh, you know when we are in that uh, process of learning a lot of our viewers here uh, might really be entering a leadership position for the first time ever what's the one advice do you think uh, that will help them for life Okay, build your own leadership skill is something which I think is good. There are there yeah. there, well, there are a couple of uh, ways of leadership. Try to be flexible in your in your leadership skills. Look at what the organization is, what your ecosystem is, what your surrounding is. For example, I was a taskmaster at one point of time. Yeah. Over a period of time, then it became a servant leadership. Okay, now it's more of a mix of both. Right. right, but it it depends on which scenario you are and where you are, that you have to bring in which aspect of the leadership. That's okay. more. That's that's where you should be more focused on. Uh, you have a lot of information out there from a leadership okay. student, but at right. what what to be used is something which is on your discretion, and that yeah. that brings the maturity in the leadership. That's the scale. Right. That you know, and how beautifully you mentioned how one grows from one road to the other and uh, sort of that's the how the career really spans. And here, if I was to ask, uh, you know, for you to go back to the time when you received your first salary, how is it that you spend that money? And I know first of anything are very, very exciting. So we'd like for you to go back then, please. Oh, yeah. So I so there was this odd works which we used to do. And we have IT professionals so getting your... Uh, uh, your computer at that time it was a PCs which are getting assembled so getting all that to a very professional job and getting your first salary yeah. to be very frank uh, had no clue what to do with it but had lots of plans so you get one rupee and you you are you are you are already made a plan of a billion dollar right that yeah. so uh, largely it was more spent with uh, the rituals which we follow the traditional way of going back to the parish and big even and then a small party is always welcome out there and then that goes back to the family and your day to day working around it over while i do have that one rupee which was kept aside right. uh, for my first salary still now i do have well that's so very very thoughtful and looking back at that really does show uh, like you mentioned, uh, you know, few traditions are so very close to our heart and one likes to follow those as the good luck charm. Uh, and you very beautifully said that uh, these are things that really mean a lot to one in their lifetime. So what is it that life, uh, uh, how, how do you feel that life becomes so very meaningful? What is it to you that is of utmost importance that completes you as a person? Oh, the family, for sure. Right. Uh, while we have our professional lives, we have our friends, our, our ecosystem, which supports us at their professional life. But uh, somewhere or down the line, we start forgetting about the family who supported you to yes. be here. Right. I think that's the biggest force, and uh, that's that has brought us where we are right now. Uh, from from a parental point of view, also, and now with your own family, your wife, kid, and other thing. Uh, you, uh, if you really go back and think about how did it make you what you are, right? Very simple of that. Your stress, you go home, your kid brings you 10 things and you're lost. The stress is kept aside, you are with something else. So while that, that journey happens, 
right? And that is a lot of sacrifices which happens around you. Right. Uh, when you start valuing it, that's the meaning of life which comes out from there. And the so-called term called as work-life balance, which you always yeah. speak about, uh, you start seeing sense in that. Right? Right. Generally, when you're in a professional life, oh, get this done, right? This, this is a task, yeah. get it off. Right. 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 And there, then this is a life where you go back and get it. Is this more of stress relievers kind of thing, if I ever to say? But that teaches you a lot also. That teaches you a lot. That's what I put my life at. You know, it's so interesting to see how a leader like you can attain that work-life balance. And in fact, that's what urges me to ask my next question. You know, like you said, how important family is. A lot happened uh, when the pandemic was on. We saw a lot change both in personal lives and in professional lives. So if I was to ask you, how have you changed as a person pre-COVID and post-COVID? And how have you changed as a leader? What would that be? Oh, that's a great Great one. And uh, just to take one leaf from your the previous question, which was that of life balance. Sure. Uh, it was not always that way, the way I spoke about. It, we learned a lot. We learned yeah. a lot. If you ask me a year back, I was heavy work all like task or internet and all of that. Now it's it's just gotten. So you the pandemic has taught us this. And that's where right, I'm right. Yeah. you were a taskmaster, you know what is going on, how to go about it. You are a new leader, you're pushing that guns to make sure that things are in place. And that's also a learning curve for you. And then comes pandemic. The whole scenario changes in. And then comes to you is your servant leadership, right? The servant leadership coming up, being more empathy comes up heavily, right? right. Uh, collaboration brings makes sense at any point of time. And then the whole family aspect also comes into right. place. And what did you learn from so many days, right? There were two years which passed by. That's how you connected. While you are face to face, you have a different rapport and a different thought and different culture which has been brought in. And suddenly when this online thing comes in, you have to change, right? And how, how rigid you are or how flexible you are as a leader to change, that was put to test. Right, and that's where we change a lot so from a task leadership to now a leader, servant leadership with a lot of empathy and collaborative mode which is coming up and taking it from a point of view that the person standing in front of you he's got a good thought for you that's more like it you know you've put it together so very well of how the pandemic has changed or how added this much of uh, uh, being more agile changing to the environment and use of technology and i'm sure in your career as a technology consultant you've always been very very passionate about using the latest technology to provide business solutions to accelerate growth for all your consumers but here in my next segment uh, we'd love to know you more as a person than a leader so i'm going to dive in right into a very interesting rapid fire round where i'm going to ask you about five questions you have to give me a choice of either of these and you get split seconds to answer okay so let's uh, begin are you ready oh yeah all right so is it work or play work play <laughs> can i use both of it because it's interesting it's a i i love that very interesting word that you've just come up with okay a thinker or a doer a thinker all right a team or a solo player a team for sure a book or a movie a book any day okay and would it be coffee or chai no coffee <laughs> i come from starbucks so my previous was starbucks so i'm so used right. to coffee. i was so hoping that you're going to say that you would love to have a cutting chai in person with me and my entire team along with our viewers <laughs> but i think coffee wins it hands down mr men and it has been such a delight having this conversation with you and i'm sure uh, our viewers had a lot of fun and got a lot to learn from you so thank you so very much for joining us and to our viewers. It's time for you to engage and learn a lot more from the various guests that we bring to you right here at the Cutting Chai Stories. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Isha. Thank you for having me.